Hello and welcome to The Old Bob Show, produced and directed here at Vernon Communications in Westby. Westby is located in the beautiful western Wisconsin area of coolies and valleys and ridges. And we're happy to bring to you now The Old Bob Show, and here is your host, Bob Burrell. Well, hello again, and welcome to The Old Bob Show. And as you know, I'm Old Bob. But uh, I don't feel old at all. I, uh, in fact, it's, it's something kind of phenomenal going on. I'm feeling younger every day, it seems like. And that's because I have uh, wonderful uh, interviews with people like Reverend Don Grevin, who is with me today from Bad Axe Lutheran Church, uh, oh, about 20 miles from Viroqua, Don. Thank you so much yes, for, you're sure welcome. for taking the time. I, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, we've all been exposed and have read uh, in the last months and even the uh, years, but more so these days, about the incredible persecution of Christians around the world. And uh, to get back here to our own homeland, our own country, uh, I think there's also a great concern on many people's parts as to what's happening with our Christian faith here in America. And uh, in our local hometowns and uh, cities and what have you, um, it, it feels like uh, everything's kind of broken loose and uh, there's, a, there's a populist um, kind of unchristian uh, uh, goings on in our society where there doesn't seem to be a, a, an anchor anymore of certain standards which uh, of course represent uh, Christianity as, as many of us were raised. And so um, I thought I would ask uh, Don Grevin, Pastor Don Grevin, who uh, is, is well versed in religion and in Christianity and experience and um, uh, has handled many, many different kinds of experiences in his life with people, not only here but abroad as well. Uh, Don has been a missionary overseas and you might remember that uh, he introduced to us and we had him on board here, uh, uh, um, Usama, Usama Dak Doc, uh, Dak -Doc from uh, Florida, but he's actually an Egyptian Egypt. Christian right. and uh, one of his missions is to um, help convert Muslims to Christianity. But um, I think it's a given that, uh, that we're not alone in being very concerned, uh, mm -hmm. Reverend uh, uh, Don, what, um, what's happening. And so uh, I asked um, Pastor Don to uh, come and talk with me about the phenomenon of what appears to be a uh, kind of a, a, a lessening of the Christian faith in our society. And so uh, he sent me a, a wonderful quick outline here called The Current Status of Biblical Christianity in America. And I immediately asked you, biblical versus what? Uh, biblical uh, versus uh, anything that's going on today. Uh, how does, how does the, the churches of today, how do we uh, compare with what the Bible says should be true of Christians and of Christian churches. There's been, uh, yeah, and that's really interesting. There, there's been an issue, of course, in, in all of our churches relative to biblical Christianity, I think. Yes. And uh, uh, Jean, Jean Burrell uh, recently did a, uh, a paper on, on the Hauge movement. Was it Jean? Okay. Yeah, the Hauge movement. Sure. And wow, I mean, there was divisions and, and interpretations and, and goings on about that, but we don't even seem to have that kind of a debate these days. No. It just kind of seems like everything is kind of, you know, lay yeah. it out there. Believe what you want, live how you want. There you go. It doesn't are. make any difference. Yeah. I'm okay, you're okay, everybody's okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so here you are. You're a pastor of a church. You've got a great challenge going on here now. Yes. Not that that's happening in your church because you've got a, you've got a wonderful membership there. Yes. But... Um, Wow, it's, um, it's scary. Yes. As we look at the church today, uh, you know, the, the broad picture of what Christianity is, is uh, looked at today, and what, what, what do Christians believe? Is there a core uh, set of beliefs uh, that Christians today agree on? And, uh, you know, I, I think the, the contrast can be best seen by looking at where was the church in the founding of America and where are we today? There you go. That's fine. That sounds that sounds like the like the right the, the right way to go at it. There there are many other other factors we won't get into today, 
But I guess what, what I'd like to just share today is for us to consider where, uh, what are the roots of Christianity in our nation and where is the church today in comparison to them? Well, I, I'm looking at, thank you, I'm, I'm looking at, and I have to wear these, uh, these blinkers on because I, uh, I can't see. But uh, anyway, uh, you've got a wonderful outline here and um, you've got some quotes to think about uh, relative to where the church started, where it started, right. and where it is today. And you start with Patrick Henry, the speaker. Yeah, I, I thought that, uh, and I, you know, I could have pages of quotes, but I, I selected these uh, four or five from our early history in our country that uh, remind us of the biblical base of Christianity in uh, as as people came to America. Uh, Patrick Henry, for example, we all know who he is. Uh, he wrote, it cannot be emphasized too strongly that this great nation was founded by Christians, not on, quote, religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. There you are. Very clear. Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president says, but for the Bible, we could not know right from wrong. And I'll tell you that <clears throat> in my ancient uh, years here, I'm uh, doing more and more biblical study and learning. I mean, uh, I, I wish I had done this when I was a young man going to confirmation class. Sure. But that's a little young to really yeah. absorb some of this, I think. Yes. But um, <clears throat> so far, already what you've said, uh, is this being taught today to the congregations or, or, or bring it brought to them again mm -hmm. to try and help get the, the foundation back? Uh, basically, I think not. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not in society. Certainly not in, in, in general society. There's a rewriting of history to eliminate any emphasis on the, on the, the, uh, the core values of right. our founding fathers. Yeah. And, and of the churches in the, in the early days. Uh, for example, you know, the quote from Abraham Lincoln there about that without the Bible we can't know right from wrong. Exactly. Uh, that exactly. is completely rejected in our society today that has no values. There are no rights and wrongs. There, are, there is no absolute truth uh, according to the philosophy of, uh, of our day and it is destructive if you don't know what is right and wrong, live any way you want. And that's exactly what we're seeing lived out today yeah. in the church and outside the church. Right. Yes, absolutely. You can see it all around us and you can see it every day in the news where people mm -hmm. are committing violence against each other and, uh, uh, and, are, and are questioning, of course, and big time. The, absolutely. You know, the, uh, to me, the um, Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and the Constitution are the Two to me are the two sort of the two standards yes. of behavior and, 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 and belief. And how are those two issues? How how are the Ten Commandments and the Constitution viewed by most people today? Whether in government or in schools or in churches or in in general or in society, yeah. uh, they're thrown out. Yeah. Because you know nobody can tell me what's what I should do and what is right and what is wrong. Sure. Uh, this whole idea of, uh, of that there are no absolute values is destructive to human life and to spiritual life. You got and, it. And to the churches. Well, uh, then you go to another great guy. Yes. Uh, Daniel Webster uh, was a United States uh, congressman, a senator. He was the, uh, he, he served as Secretary of State for three different presidents. Imagine. And uh, this particular uh, quote uh, uh, of Daniel Webster is, uh, if we abide by the principles of the Bible, our country will go on prospering and to prosper. But if we and our posterity neglect its instructions and authority, no man can tell how sudden a catastrophe may overwhelm us and bury all our glory in profound obscurity. I'm afraid that's what we're it's seeing happening. today. It's happening uh, today. Look at society in general, uh, whether it be from the government aspect, from the social aspect, from the, in our churches, there is, is uh, chaos because we have 
left the, the principles taught in the Bible. Now the other fellow, Alexis de Tocqueville, was a, uh, um, a French statement right. who, came, who came to the United States in the 1830s. Yep. Uh, at that time, our country was flourishing. You know, 50 years, 60 years since the, since the uh, Declaration of Independence. And, and our country was just blossoming. And right. he came to find out, he wanted to find out what was the cause of, why is this new little country prospering so greatly? And he looked at all different aspects of the country, but then he, I'm just going to share two sentences that summed it up. He said, not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her genius and power. America is great because America is good. Yeah. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be That's great. Right. America has been, been the light, if you will, for the world in it that has. sense. It has. And, and, and of course, in, in the, after World War II, things began to really fall apart. Yes. And here we are today where we have um, a president saying uh, this is not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, where all of our higher educational institutions are, are just absolutely trying, eliminating the idea that there's a spiritual force. Exactly. Uh, Christianity, you know, we look, you ask a common person on the street, well, what's the state of Christianity today? Yeah. Well, there's churches all around. You can go to any church you want. You know, we've yeah. got radio, Christian radio, Christian right. television. Yeah. Uh, everybody can, anybody can buy a Bible if they want. And, and uh, yes, but what about the spiritual state of the church? That's what really, uh, uh, what are the biblical foundations of Christianity that caused even Alexis de Tocqueville to, to say, uh, the power in America is because they, it's in the churches, in the message of the gospel. Yeah. And yes. when we forsake that, then the foundations are destroyed. And that's why uh, I, I, I quoted that one verse in Psalm 11, verse 3, that raises a question for each one of us to answer. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? And the question is, have the foundations of spiritual life and the principles of Scripture been destroyed in the church, in society, in education? <clears throat> and the answer is obviously yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's the end. It's destruction. And if you think it can't happen here, uh, look at Germany, mm -hmm. which, uh, my goodness, had... <clears throat> wonderful, uh, wonderful ministers and scholars of religion and, uh, and, and, and great examples. And Germany, uh, you know, was, was, a, was a, 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 would you call it a Christian nation? I think it was. It, it certainly was. I mean, yeah. when, you, when you look back, the even, uh, you know, the Reformation started there yeah, with, exactly. with Luther. And, exactly. and, and really, going, spreading out all over Western Europe, yep. there was a huge... <clears throat> uh, uh, revival of, of spiritual life in in the early early days right. when our country is being formed, and now today, this is, it's even worse there, where we've been we've been to nearly every country in Western Europe, and all over the place you find you know churches that are uh, either empty or been converted into uh, well even converted into Muslim mosques yeah as, as well as you know. Uh, secular, you know, the churches are empty. I'm talking with uh, Pastor Don Grevin, uh, pastor of the uh, Bad Axe Lutheran Church here in uh, Vernon County. <clears throat> and um, he brings a topic that I think is one of the most significant, important topics we have today in our nation and in our lives, and that is our own kind of, our biblical Christianity. Is it at work? Is there a force here? Or have we simply neglected it or just kind of forgotten about it? And uh, you've mentioned some wonderful people, as, as uh, if you will, who, who uh, developed and flourished because of Christianity mm -hmm. and helped their country flourish. And that was uh, Patrick Henry, who was Speaker of the House, and Abraham Lincoln, and to De Tocqueville, uh, who couldn't say enough 
That's about, right. about the force of church, Jesus Christ, Christianity in our nation. So, um, so what are some of the um, what are some of the of these very basic uh, foundations of, of biblical Christianity? Of course, it has to do with people who are ready to stand up and bring the word mm -hmm. to anyone and everyone. Yes. Um, but but you've got God is the creator of all. I mean, you have, that's your yeah. belief. You have you either believe yeah. that or you don't. <clears throat> yeah, and, and and I would say it this way. It's not just my belief. It's clear. That's what the scriptures teach very, very clearly. You can, you know, the very first verse in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God right. created the heavens and the earth. Right. Right. And that truth goes on all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of references in, in the scriptures itself uh, to the fact that God is our creator. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, that, you know, churches of all stripes have, have held to since the first century. Yeah. They summarize the <clears> truths <throat> of the Bible, and, and this is what Christians believe. And the very first statement is, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven yeah, and, and earth. earth. Maker of heaven and earth. Yes. And, and all through scripture we see references to God our creator. Uh, I was interested just a couple of three weeks ago when Governor Walker was over in England. I think it was during, uh, uh, he was over there for some meetings and he was asked about evolution or some anniversary of uh, right. you know, ev evolution. And, right. and when he, he simply stated that he believed in creation versus evolution. And here in this country, why? <laughs> he, even the, quote, conservatives uh, in right. politics, jumped all over him, you know, like he was some kind of Neanderthal. You know, believe, or you still believe in creation. But the, the interesting thing is, though, that he has resonated with the general population. Exactly. And, and you know, and obviously, is look, look, what, look what he stood up to and has continued yeah. to, uh, to be strong and, and to move ahead. And I think that reminds, r reminds us, we must not be silent and allow those who want to to change the message of the scriptures, we need to stand up for what, what it actually yeah. says. Yep. God is our creator. And, uh, you know, why is evolution almost universally accepted and taught as fact? When everybody knows, uh, those who hold to it and those that don't, everybody knows it's a theory. And it has not and it cannot be proven. Absolutely not. And absolutely not. And there are many, many good uh, documentaries, <clears throat> many, a lot of good literature. Mm -hmm. That does exactly that, and uh, uh, I, you know I saw a video uh, at a church here uh, some time ago about the unbelievable design of life, exactly. physical life that is, yeah. and and uh, you don't evolve into that. Right, it doesn't happen by accident. Exactly. Yeah. I uh, I don't know how we're coming with time. I, I tell my confirmation class. It's like going to Menards where you can buy anything for a house. Every, every bit that <laughs> yeah. you need for a house is in the side. What happens if a tornado comes through? Yeah. Uh, do you come out the next day and you find a nice house sitting in the parking lot, all mm. built, got all the appliances, lights are on, everything's ready to move in? No. It goes, uh, you know, the laws, of, the laws of science are laws. Like the law of second law of thermodynamics is, Everything is moving from a state of order to disorder, not the other way around, as the evolutionist wants to say. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've, you, you find it almost, and you know, it's it's uh, incredible that mm -hmm. one doesn't believe in, yeah. in 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 God as a creator of all things, yeah. because you look at all things, and there's not. I can't make you. Only That's God right. can. That's right. And um, I can't make my little puppy dog either. Only yep. God can. And the more we find out about the intricacies of life and the DNA and all of that has been discovered in the last years, it points to intelligent design. Yeah. My Bible says God is the intelligent designer. And, uh, and that it agrees with what we see in the real world with the evidence of the world. So we get back to the, uh, to the management and the organization of our uh, secular world. And um, uh, 
You know, how in the world, so you, you're talking about confirmation class. What, what, how old are your confirmants? Ah, junior high, seventh, yeah. eighth grade. Yeah, right. Well, I was, you know, you were there once, I was there once. And it, it's pretty hard to, you know, to get, get your, your very busy mind at that age to accept these things because you got so many other temptations going on in your life, and mm -hmm. from sports to, to you name it. Um, but I have a feeling that there are a lot of serious and um, some very devoted uh, young people today and, uh, and of all ages who it seems to be kind of a cream that's coming to the top here. Mm -hmm. And I talk about uh, people who uh, are missionaries, for example, and they, they go at the risk of their life and their family's lives to, from Africa to, to wherever. Um, and I, 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 I find that very encouraging. Mm -hmm. What's discouraging is that it seems to me that the, all the amenities, the physical uh, amenities of life are trumping Mm -hmm. the, the spiritual and the moral code, if you will. And that is very, very true, you know. Uh, be, and I think one of the reasons why there is such a great decline in interest in, quote, spiritual things or the church, uh, one of the reasons is, and there are, there are others as well, but one of the reasons is that the church has left the foundation of the faith. Well, there you are. There you are. Uh, it's, it's my feeling. Um, it it seems like they're just talking to something, mm -hmm. and and um, everyone's just kind of listening to some, but they don't have that thing in their heart anymore. Right, and that was one of the other things that I I jotted down a basic foundation of biblical Christianity. Not only uh, God is Creator, but that Jesus Christ is the only Savior. Uh, uh, Jesus is the only savior of the world. He's the only hope for anyone, uh, for salvation, for eternal life. The scriptures makes it very plain. Jesus himself said in John 14, 6, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but right. by me. Exactly. And in Acts yeah. chapter 4, verse 12, it's such a great uh, reminder uh, where it says uh, that... Uh, I get it just right. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Now, in the world, in, <clears throat> in our society, and in the church also today, there is so much emphasis on, <clears throat> on this diversity. I know. That, yeah. that there is no truth. Oh well, one God is the same as another. So that's long, not so true. long, as long as you're to being tolerant is the uh, yeah. yeah that that's the uh, idolatry. And if and, you will. and and tolerance the name, that whole term itself has changed. Um, Christians are the most tolerant people in the world. You are free to live however you want yep. and believe whatever you want. But to say, <clears throat> for us to say the truth of the scriptures, there is only one way. Yeah. You're free not to accept it. Everyone, every person has a free choice. So here we are. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're living still in a, in a very settled, uh, civilized, uh, organized uh, country. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're, not, you know, <clears throat> we're not blowing each other up as is going on in other parts of the world. But we, Christianity, biblical Christianity, is, is really up against the wall right now because we're facing anti-Christian mm -hmm. um, life. Yeah. And uh, it's not only the Islams and the Muslims and, and the other anti-Christian phase, it's in a lot of us who just simply kind of go along in life and we're not not being, living in, in God's code. I heard a great, uh, a great definition of what humanism is. And humanism is spreading all over the world and it's simply this. Leaving God out. <laughs> Leaving God out. That's humanism. You can't, make it in. you can't make it any simpler than that. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> and that is what is happening. And one of the reasons that is happening is because it's being so forced upon even our little children, right, from earliest grades on in the public schools. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no God. Do what you want. Don't let anybody tell you what to do. There's no authority. There's no... Uh, there's no right or wrong, uh, and like you mentioned earlier, the Ten Commandments, yeah. uh, you know, been driven out of uh, 
uh, uh, every public place. You know, it used to be that the, the standards, the, the moral standards for our country were founded on the biblical principles of the Ten Commandments. Now, all of our laws and, uh, and philosophies are turning away, rejecting the fact that there's a God, that there is a Savior, one way to be saved, and it's in Christ only. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and believe whatever you want because it doesn't make any difference what you believe. In other words, it doesn't matter no. because there's nothing of value in any belief. It's what the second. Right. It's almost a fatalistic uh, society. Uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, it's almost fatalistic, and it is just kind of marching down a road to what a lot of people describe as the end times. Yes. Yes. And uh, and and it is. Uh, you read. Uh, 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 well, uh, I just just last week, I, I uh, went, um, a couple of days ago, I shared with uh, our, our men. Uh, just a few verses from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and I just read these very quickly. Realize this, that in the last days, <clears throat> difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal haters of good, and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Wow. And it says, in the last days, that's the way it's going to be. That, that's where we are now. It's like reading today's newspaper. Exactly, exactly. It's like You're reading today's right newspaper. That. Well, Pastor Grubb and I appreciate so much your being here and, and to awaken, help mm -hmm. keeping all of us awake as to uh, how we're kind of slugging through a morass here and the answer for salvation and for clear thinking and a, mm -hmm. a clear life is right here. It's a, it's, it, it is. We do have a word from an almighty God. You better believe Who created it. us, created us, yeah. sent his son to save us. This is the word of God. That is it. Right. Exactly. And, and <clears throat> you can say that that's uh, uh, putting down others. It's not putting anyone at all. It's the facts. Yeah. This is the truth. Yeah. Walk in it. You so walk thank in you, um, boy. Um, <clears throat> I think you know what I think that you should probably be here once a month. <laughs> yeah. And uh, seriously, and just kind of help uh, all of us, you know, get our get our anchors right, and help other people to help other people get their anchors right. And uh, of course, if you want to, you want firsthand to be with Don Grevin, you can be at his church at, at Bad Axe. Your services are services are at ten thirty on Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, we'd love to have you. We're also on uh, the television every day here at uh, Vernon Telephone. There you are. Fantastic. Uh, absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pastor Well, Grumman, thank you so much. For yep. bringing the Good word. And uh, for all of you, God bless, and uh, blessings on all of you. We're all blessed, Don. Yeah. And uh, let's keep it that way. And uh, we, we all have a huge, huge challenge to keep our country stronger all the time. Absolutely. So... Pastor Don Grevin, uh, Bad Axe Lutheran Church here uh, west of Viroqua, Wisconsin, and uh, you'll see a credit on, on Pastor Grevin uh, as we hang up here. And uh, you guys, have a, all of you out there, have a, have a good day, have a good week. Uh, use your Bible, go with the Word, and God bless everyone.